Alright, so I got a, something different for you guys today. I'm just gonna be the introducing the talking and driving method of filming today. Normally I just uh, sit in my back swing and talk, but there's too much traffic, so I'm gonna try the quieter route while I go s search out a little spot that I'm looking to target in the next few days. Anyway, got this nice polo shirt on. You guys like, uh, like to rock polos, man? Our sponsor, Fishing Sir, has some nice uh, polo shirts for you guys to check out. I'll leave the link in the description down below. You guys can check it out. All different colors, sizes. Pretty cool. Alright, so we're about here. Let's check this out. Looking for some guards. I'm looking at just sitting here at the river, checking out, see this bait, see what's going on. Alright, back on topic, man. So, here's, here's kind of how the day went. You know, we get there to the beach, and it's uh, starts running two, two and a half, which is not bad. It's pretty calm, but the wind was picking up. You know, it's about eleven o'clock. You know, when I'm, I get there around eleven, by the time I set up there at that launch by twelve, the wind's already gusting about fifteen. And I know I'm only gonna be limited on time because of the wind, the way it's gonna pick up towards the end of the day so by like around four o'clock the wind was gonna pick up anyway so I had to be back by four so you know the first thing I do is you know paddle hard get through the breakers once you clear the breakers usually that's, that's a good thing about um, offshore fishing you know when you spend a day out there four hours of fishing every every hour you're paddling it's not like it's not like you're just out there paddling wasting time you know as soon as you uh, beat the breakers you know you're you can start dropping lines and that's exactly what I do I get, I get maybe a hundred two hundred yards away from the pier Drop my first line, maybe 20, 25 feet of line out, just because uh, I don't I don't let so much line out go up when I first get there because you're you're still oh, I need gas now. But, oh well. Yeah. Anyway, I don't let so much line out because since it's shallow, you don't want to have that thing dragging on the bottom and uh, hook up stingrays or sharks or what, whatever else. It's catfish that like to hang around the bottom, so I, I just drop about 25 feet of slow troll until I get to about 30, 30 feet of water then I'll pull out more line and uh, troll from there but anyway we get to the first rig and you know I'm not I wasn't uh, liking what I was seeing there wasn't so much action going on but as soon as I get there I troll the first time I troll around I see this big school of spade fish come up to the side of the kayak and they're just following me around for a little bit so I look, I'm sitting there looking back as I'm looking back you know, I see this uh something dark coming from the bottom and there, there was multiple of them and sure enough you know since I've never hooked a cobia before I didn't really know what to do I'm thinking well I, and they say pitch a bait at it you know have a bait handy pitch a bait at it so that's exactly what I did I got my Yozuri just tossed it right there wasn't expecting how how quick it would react but within 10 seconds that fish grabbed it and you know like like they all say, these these fish, you know, they the uh, cobia, they like to hang around the structure. So sure enough, as soon as they hooked up, immediately he just ran to that rig, and you know, I'm just trying to force him in, turn his head, get him, get him away from that rig. And uh, yeah, he uh, he pulled the hooks on me, but it was still a fun fight while I had him on there. And then we had a. Uh, Good thing we had another chance at it, you know, a few minutes later. A few minutes later, we uh, hooked up to another cobia, which was awesome, you know, this time, hooked him up on the floating on top, ribbon fish, probably 25 feet away from the rig. The first one was bigger, the one I lost was bigger. This one here, I actually got to land it. Fight, though. Which was, uh, which is cool, you know. Land my first cobia, so technically it was a good trip, you know. Hadn't uh, tried that rig so much this year, and to land our first Kobe out there in such a short amount of time was pretty good. But I didn't bring a measuring board with me, so I didn't know exactly how big it was. Right, Kobe right. got to be 37, so I just go ahead and release Here. this guy. Fine, buddy. Don't grab my other And as uh, the day goes on, you know, another hour passes, and I'm thinking, well, it's hot. I gotta be back by four. So I just do one more troll around the rig slowly. And uh, this jack hooks up. This jack's not big, probably a 30, 32 inch jack, small jack. He didn't put much of a fight up. 
mainly because he swam on top. So as soon as I saw him, I just kind of forced him in, put the fish grips on there, and uh, solved that problem. Took a picture with him real quick, and uh, back he went. And you know, usually it was already. You know, that's my third fish in. That's wasn't no sign of kings. So since that was no sign of kings or Spanish. Nothing really worth uh, sticking around for in the conditions that I was in. You know, you, these, these swells, they don't actually show how big the swells are when you look at it from a camera's perspective, especially because the camera's not level with the water, so you can't really see how it really looks. You know, when it's camera's angled up a little bit, kind of gives the illusion that it's calm out there, which it really wasn't. It was kind of choppy once it, as the day was getting later it was, it was getting choppier the wind was picking up so i decided just to slow troll my way in and uh i get to the i get to the beach a few few hundred yards from the beach i'm looking at the surf i'm not liking the way the surf is looking so i go ahead and break down my gear put it on the side and uh putting your gear down to the side is definitely something you should do especially when you're going to the surf zone because you never know what happens and luckily i did because i hit the breakers Good thing I leave my uh, reels and my stuff hooked up to the rod leashes still, to the kayak. So, you know, one, on one of the breakers, it hit the kayak, it hit my my rods, and my rods actually came off. And of course, you know, I was already like the first gut already. So, if for some reason they weren't strapped down, I was just gonna jump in and go grab them as soon as that happened. And that's, that's the reason why I leave my stuff strapped down because you never know when that can happen. That can happen to you in the third gut. Uh, two three hundred dollars here not fun anyway that's the way the day went you know got a hooked up my first Kobe which the first one was definitely legal but nothing I could do he pulled the hook on me and then we got that second Kobe got a quick pick which still still good experience you know and then as the day went on like I said I got that jack and then back home we go man that's it that's all there is to it Offshore fishing is definitely fun, you know, I go out there, I don't always go out there and paddle 10-15 miles a day, some days I just decide I'm, I'm going to go for 3 hours, I'm heading to the first rig, 30 minutes I'm there to the rig, 30 minutes later I'm back from the rig, you know, fish an hour or two out there, good enough. But hopefully one of these days we'll get on to some kings or something out there, it's been a, only fished a handful of times. Anyway, like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the links down below. I'll leave the link to this shirt down below. It's a nice looking polo, man. Comfortable. Just testing out my new uh, new look. You know, got some basketball shorts on with the polo. See how it looks.